So this is what we're going to be drawing today. And by the end of this video, I will have such a hold on you, not even a thousand degree knife could separate your slippery potty trained brain from all the crap I'm about to put inside of it. <laughs> so this is Daddy X's men's clothing starter pack. <laughs> what? From what I've seen on YouTube, it seems to be kind of a tricky subject to teach. So what I'm gonna do is, ah, I got it. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get my, whoa! No, that's my favorite book. Uh, this is Bridgman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life, and this guy is a genius. So I'm gonna see what he has to say about clothing and wrinkles because I want to give you guys my best. So let me read an example here. Uh, let me find. It's at the back of the book. Okay, so this is called the half lock fold. The half lock takes place every time a tubular or flattened piece of material abruptly changes in direction. With, with the. When the turn is at or near a right angle, the locking is more sharp and angular. When it falls in sweeping curves, the locks are more the rounded. The study of Wumbo? It's first grade, SpongeBob! Explain themselves without difficulty. Therefore, must be direct and simple. It's so obviously simple, right? I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to lock myself up in like a cave, like a monk somewhere in, uh, in China, Asia Stan. And, uh, and I'm gonna unlock the secrets of this. I'm gonna let it enlighten me. And uh, when I come back, I will teach it to you in a way that will not melt your brain. So uh, <laughs> wish me luck, and if I don't come back, tell my wife I love her. I traveled to the misty mountains of Pandaria. It was there I found my master, George Bridgman. <laughs> We trained for many years, preparing my hands and my mind. It was a painful process, an experience I will cherish every time I crawl in bed, cold and alone with my tormented thoughts. Okay, so as I'm editing this, I just have to put this in there. This part coming up where I'm like lifting up my shirt and talking about wrinkles, this is the most important part. This is where the tutorial starts. And if you're gonna learn anything, learn this part. It's more important than the actual drawing part. I really need you to have this information in the back of your mind, so pay attention, please. Um, I'm just gonna give you the essentials. I'm not gonna go into all the physics. So here's the main points that I learned. Um, first of all, you want to accentuate the body, not just put random wrinkles and stuff all over the place. You want to um, complement whatever form is underneath. So. Um, if I'm using my shirt as an example, there's uh, a couple of different things. One is tension points, and a natural tension point that happens on a shirt is on the shoulder. So you can see that there are, when I just relax, there are lines that come from my shoulder because this is the part that's holding it up. As if, like I'm holding it right here, there's going to be wrinkles radiating from that. So when I'm resting, there's wrinkles radiating from the shoulder, so keep that in mind. Um, also, if you twist your body, it creates a tension point, which in this case, it's my pecs. So it's coming from the tension point all the way out and it's radiating out. The other thing is, if you keep turning your, uh, the other way, it does the same thing. So when you're twisting and turning a character, you never have to worry about which way the folds go. Just think about where it's going to be stretching from. This is going to be the tight side. This is going to be the loose side. So it's going to come all the way from over here. Um, let's see. The next thing is um, they widen as they get further from the uh, tension point. So if I hold this up like this, uh, if I hold up my shirt, and if I have a wrinkle going down here, it's going to be wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So it's going to be smaller down here and bigger down here. Uh, last thing is um, the shirt will rest. So any place that uh, shirts or cloth rests, so like here on your hips or the uh, or like your your jeans, you know it's kind of resting on your feet. Uh, any place that it rests, it's gonna have the zigzag folds. And the last thing, and this is the most important thing, okay? The most important thing that I can tell you is to have something called negative space, which is a place 
with no wrinkles, okay? You need a place for your eye to rest. It can't be all even, the wrinkles can't be all evenly placed, okay? You have to, like if I, if I do this, there's a big blank spot right here and then some wrinkles here and then some wrinkles like on my shoulder and it creates a really nice balance for your eye to go. So you need that negative space. You need places that don't have any wrinkles. So concentrate on just a few parts that do have wrinkles and a few parts that don't have wrinkles. Uh, I think that's it. Resume your quest. I will, Sensei. To start the drawing portion of this tutorial, you will need a bunch of professional art supplies. So this is the sacred broken Halloween pencil I was given after being anointed by the head monk of the Buddhist monastery. Such a work of art. We're going to do the t-shirt first, so naturally draw some french fries. This is basically just to get a rectangle with a rounded top to it. On the top of the sides, draw some triangles. Those will be the sleeves. Then in the middle of that top line, draw a collar for the neck. Here's the cool part. Make the outline at the bottom of the shirt all squiggles. We want to ruin the outline of the french fry thing that we made earlier. You can do random zigzaggy lines to make the wrinkles at the bottom of the shirt where it's resting on the hips. Remember though, you can't cross the lines over the top of each other like, uh, like the letter X, nice. okay? Now you can draw a couple of lines sweeping up toward the chest. That's because the chest sticks out a little bit and creates kind of a weak version of a pinch point. Now it feels more like there's a body underneath, right? Add in the lines going toward the pinch point at the shoulders, and you're done with the wrinkles for this shirt. Oh, but come on! That looks so sketchy and sloppy. How do you get it to look like what it looks like on the left? Very dark with lots of pressure. Draw over the lines that you want to keep. Which is everything except for the top part of the french fry container that goes uh, over the collar, and some of the lines by the shoulder and above the armpit. You can murder the flyaway sketchy lines by erasing the whole thing lightly. When you do this, only the dark lines that you went over will stay. Now just go over what's already there and you have something that looks kind of like it was made by someone who almost knows what they're doing. Story of my life. And of course, you need to add the face at the end. And that's it, bakas and gentlemen. Uh, let's move on to the long sleeve. Start with that french fry rectangle with the rounded top from before. Now, the most important part of this is to hold your pencil like a T-Rex suppressing explosive diarrhea, and then draw a portrait of yourself in the middle of the shirt. At this point of the drawing, I want you to take a step back, look at your beautiful drawing, and say to yourself, Wow, I am such a great artist. Look what I can do. Don't ever be afraid of the blank paper. When in doubt, draw a stupid face to start out with. You should leave the paper bleeding and begging for mercy, not the other way around. After we have those stupid gorilla looking arms in place, we can move on to the wrinkles and folds. Add some bumps to the outline at the bottom. Uh, the material is folding down to tuck into the belt, so there will be a little bit of extra fabric there. And as a result, some folds will appear. There are a few ways to do the collar, so if you want the dude to be like all buttoned up with a tie or unbuttoned more than this guy, look at some photo references. This is just one of the many ways to do the collar. It's like a U and then you add some like Doritos coming off the side for the flappy things. Now we can kind of go over the outline to make sure that the overall shape of the shirt is aesthetically pleasing before we add the folds. That line going across is to show where the sleeves connect into the torso part of the shirt, and it's also the same line as the bottom of the pecs. Should I do an anatomy tutorial later? Uh, anyway, there's uh, a line swooping up toward the pecs because of the weak pinch point that the chest makes from sticking out just a little bit. Oh, everyone say hi to my mother. Hi. What's up? Nothing, I just look very professional. I look very professional? Oh, thank you. <laughs> 
coming up in a second is the wrinkles for the sleeves. Now, just by being sketchy and scribbly with your lines and letting your lines go past where you need them to, you will get some interesting flyaway lines that will, uh, like, they'll, like, stimulate your mind into finding shapes, like how you see stuff in clouds. Probably more than half of the good ideas that I have um, that are successful in my paintings are created this way. And as a late, great Bob Ross would say, We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Went like this too hard, and I pooped my pants, so that is why I'm wearing this. Bye-bye. Rest peacefully, my man. I'm going to pour out a 40 for you. So with that tip about being sketchy with your lines, the tension points will be on the top and the sides of the shoulder, and it will have some uh, like zigzaggy, swoopy wrinkles by the wrist and the elbow where the material bunches up. It is scary to erase everything that you just spent time drawing, but don't be scared. My shark trap teeth are my mighty, mighty roar. I like kids and kids like me, even though they do that. Oh no, need to sharpen your pencil? Do it right on top of your drawing. Gives it flavor. Now we can add in those swooping wrinkles and pinch point ones. If you're still not sure where you want them to go, draw them lightly and then erase the ones that don't look good. Also with this one, I kept trying out some wrinkles and then erasing them because they didn't look right. This is why those stupid how to improve your art videos on YouTube always said, oh well, all you have to do is practice and all and your insipid dreams, dreams magically come true. The part that practice will give you is being able to see what looks right and what doesn't. The more you draw, the more you will be able to rely on your instincts and ninja intuition instead of drawing tutorials like this with guidelines and rules. Practice gives you freedom. Besides copying pictures to practice your drawing, my last tip is this. When you're drawing the pockets and seams and buttons of the shirt, all the details, draw very, very lightly because subtle detail can go a long way. <coughs> oh. And the last thing we're gonna do is the pants. Why am I talking like this? You can either start with a base of your character's legs or basically this trapezoid, almost rectangle thing with a wedge cut out of the bottom uh, for the space between the legs. But that space will change or disappear based on the pose your character is in. Should I do a tutorial on poses? I added a little line uh, to where the uh, <laughs> I added a little line to where the legs meet. That gives the impression that the fabric is coming together and gently bunching up together. Now comes the fun part: squiggle up the knees and by the ankles. Then add those sketchy, happy accident swooping lines like we did uh, to the sleeves. Seriously, the harder you try, the worse it will look. Trust me. Make it random, but don't intersect the lines. I'm also adding a few squiggles to the outside of the top of the pants. Totally optional. I'm just doing it because these pants are kind of baggy and I want to add some extra material in there. Okay, so quick tip with the pants. Now, the thing with this thing on the jeans is it actually starts halfway up. So it's not actually like that. It's like that. Just a quick tip. There are also a few small wrinkles coming from the pinch point of the crotch. Now, where you drew the, the, those squiggly outlines at the knees and the ankles, make some swooping folds to give the impression that the material is bunching up there. Little to no wrinkles will be on the thighs. I would just say no wrinkles. Uh, just where you made the squiggles. Keep messing with the folds and, uh, at the bottom until you get something that's, that's not an abomination to this earth. Um, that's where that whole practice thing comes in handy. Once you like copy a few pictures, you'll be like free to draw wrinkles any way you want and make it look halfway decent without a reference. So that's that boring practice piece of advice. I'm not going to get into how to draw the shoes in this one. If you do want that tutorial though, you're going to have to tell me. Communication is the key to a good relationship. It's like, <laughs> it's like instead of Netflix and chill, it's like, it's like, hey, you want to sketch and chill? <laughs> For shading, I just ran my finger across the right side of both pant legs, pants legs, pant legs, and then erased the smudges that went outside of the pants. And then I erased some of the smudging in the middle of the pants. And then the last thing was to add some soft, gradual shadows to the same side that I rubbed the pants on. And uh, it's pretty much done. I know that was kind of a weak way to explain it, but shading is like a whole other video. I don't know. Should I do it? Well, I mean, I already have one. Um, I have like a, a noob version uh, of the shading tutorial, so I'll put a link in the description. Maybe one of those iCard that comes and floats and just gets in your face like, oh my god, you gotta click me, I'm an iCard, I'm an iCard, you gotta click me, man. 
Anyway, the result of that tutorial wasn't as nice as this one, but it's super easy. So if you want shading, check it out. Um, but anyway, don't don't do it because I ah, quit sponsoring your own videos, you little scrap. If you want to draw the shorts, just cut off part of the pants. See, lazy and proud. You. Yeah. Okay, so I mentioned something about negative space in these drawings. Here's what I'm talking about. So you got like a section of folds here, one fold there, and then some stuff there. But then you have this whole section right here and right here without any wrinkles. And so your eyes kind of go to this, uh, this red part and then it can kind of rest over here. It's something called uh, creating a focal point and kind of giving your eyes uh, direction on where to go. So let's do it with the pants. So the pants, there's some wrinkles over here. There's a lot of visual information right here and there's a bunch of wrinkles and stuff down here, right? But then there is a bunch of space right here on the shins and the thighs where nothing is happening. There's actually some stuff going on here too. But there's a lot of stuff with nothing happening right here. So let's do this again. Uh, with the shirt, there's some visual information happening here. There's some wrinkles going here on the armpits. But, and maybe like a little bit there. But then, you got this whole section right here and a little bit on the arms where there's nothing happening. And that's very important. You need places in the shirt where nothing is happening. I, it's like the biggest tip that I can give you. And then of course there's Baka. So hopefully that helps you with your Sonic Brony OCs or whatever you're into. I mean, I'm not here to judge. That's fine. If you have any requests for tutorials or speed paints or anything like that, let me know. Um, like I said, any good relationship needs it needs good communication, sketch and chill days, and uh, anime binges. Um, and I know we're going through a bumpy time, but we can make it work. We can do this. It's gonna be okay. If there's one or two requests that are mentioned uh, like way more than the others, it will probably be one of the next ones that I upload. Also, I read your comments, but YouTube won't let me put a heart next to it to show you that I've read it unless I go into the actual video itself, um, which would take so much time if I did that with every video. I wouldn't be able to get another video out. So I'm going to talk to YouTube uh, to see if they can add that heart function to the comment feed in the creator studio part, um, you know, the back end of my channel, because I need a way to let you guys know that I've read your comments without giving the same boring thanks, 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 dude, thanks, thank, you know, over and over again. So, um, wish me luck with that. So yeah, here's some of the awesome fan art I got from you. It's hashtag Zabio fan art if you're interested. Uh, or for those of you saying that you don't have social media, you can send it to fanart at zabioarts.com. I'm so happy to see that people are actually watching and trying the stuff that I'm teaching. It makes me so happy every time I see you send me some. Seriously, you are the reason I get up in the morning. I'm just happier in general and living a more healthy, balanced lifestyle ever since I started this. Uh, I feel like I feel like I've found my people. So what's next? I have about 20 videos that I could start right now. So let me know what you're craving to see from me, and I will just keep doing my thing. And if you watch this whole thing until the end, well, well, first of all, I feel bad for you. Second of all, thank you. Make sure you forget to hit that like button because nobody cares. I can record on your phone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, the souls of church and children, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel. Oh, it's doing so good. Um, wow, what would the name be? That's it for now. Until next time, see you later. Alligator. Thank you. Why, Sensei? He is the best ninja ever. 
I hope that he knows that I love him. All I've ever wanted was his respect. Respect, 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 respect. Slightly racist.